take me back to the night when you became the chairman. No. Oh, what did the what this did came the, up last night too at that FDR thing? What, what did the conversation look like when Cody was like, "I want you to swing as hard as you can at my head, and I'm, I'm just going to take it." Swing for the fences was um, was the term. I said, "Okay, get your hands up." He goes, "No." I was like, "You get, buddy, you got to put your hands up." Uh, and he goes, "No." I was like, oh, "Damn." So uh, and again. It's Cody. I trust him. He trusts me. Uh, and this was supposed to be a gimmick chair. Yeah, it, but it, it's you can you can shave down a chair as much as you want. It, it's not the flat part. It's the lip of the chair yeah. that is always the the most dangerous part, and that's usually the part that catches somebody. And in this case, it was, and it was just a fraction off. Um, on he'll bl he'll he'll take the rap himself. It was I'm swinging, so it's off. I take the rap for it. Mm. I think it's my fault. Uh, but I, I hit him, and it was a wonderful reaction, and it got the shock value that did. And you hear the term red equals green, and it's, you know, blood is money and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just remember hitting him, listening, and I have a moment. I look at Brandy, and we have a little moment there, and I look back at Cody, and that's when I see the pool. And I just went, oh, shit. And I look at Brandy, and she's kind of looking at Cody, looking, and then she looks at me, and I go, Sorry, we have to, I got to get out of here and got to the back. And like, I was, I had tears of like, I had tears in my eyes. I was profusely apologizing to her because I felt so bad. I love mm. that guy. Mm. He's like my brother. Um, and then I go to check on him and he's on the table face down and he go, I go, Hey man, look, I'm so sorry. Are you okay? He's like, you are the most unsafe professional wrestler I've ever seen in my life. He starts just <laughs> busting my balls. And I'm like, you can't, you don't understand where I'm at right now, man. I'm having a hard time. He goes, yeah, I'd have a hard time too. I am having a hard time I'm getting stitches put in my head. And I'm just like, oh, this guy. Um, but that, that was the night it got, uh, business-wise, it got a lot of buzz. It set us up for what would happen at All Out. Yeah. Um, I mean, it really helped you. You got a moniker out of that. I did. I, I thought we could have um, capitalized on it a, a little bit more. I thought it... Um, you know, when you come into a company like that, starting out, I don't think we had TV at the time. That was the other thing about the. That's right. It the, was like a few months before the TV. We had either started. just gotten it or we were in the works of getting it. I can't remember the exact time, but a lot of people will say to me, "Do you think the match, you know, with Cody? Do you think you should have you should have won, like coming in? And you know, do you think that would have propelled you?" That's not the match, no, because this match started on the internet, and we did the road twos on YouTube yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. And the mm -hmm. big blow off was. Um, the match it all out. Mm -hmm. I'm a big believer in when the good guy and the bad guy are having battles, it's okay for the heel to win a few battles here and there, as long as the baby face wins the war. Mm. That was our baby face winning the war mm. because we didn't have the three months of television time to kind of bounce back and forth. There would have been five times more promos. There would have, uh, that's the part that kind of bugs me the most is I wonder what we could have done verbally against one another because again he would have forced me to up my game or he would have left me behind mm -hmm. so i was looking forward to that aspect of things we just didn't have the luxury of television time yeah 